Hello and welcome to Brand X Reviews. This one I'm going to be doing part eight of the series of reviews that look at the Marvel Cinematic Universe tie-in graphic novel series. This is going to be the last one in this series for a while anyway because it's the last, the most recent one to be released but they're going to be releasing future issues of these uh, starting, well continuing with Guardians of the Galaxy tie-in which is released in August. I've got that on pre-order so I will be reviewing it pretty much when it comes out. Uh, but this one we're looking at, uh, the most recent one, Captain America The Winter Soldier Prelude. Now if you've been following the series you'll know what these are. I'll just recap very quickly because I've done this in each video just in case anybody's kind of picked this up halfway or partway through. Just to explain very quickly what these are. Now Marvel Comics obviously do comics, we've been doing them for a long time and characters like Iron Man, uh, Thor, The Incredible Hulk have been going since the 1960s. But beginning with 2008, they started doing their own films, uh, such as Iron Man, um, obviously Thor, Incredible Hulk, Avengers, and uh, Captain America as well. So all those films that tie in, basically. Um, not including things like the X-Men and um, Spider-Man. Those are owned by different companies like 20th Century Fox and Sony. So it's the Marvel ones, the ones that tie in with the Avengers film from 2012. Um, but those films don't tie in with the comics. They're just based on comics that came before. They aren't canon with each other. So what Marvel did was they started doing their own comics that tie in with well that tie in with the films. Uh, there's not a lot of these. Uh, this is pretty much what you can get. So there's not a huge amount. There's not nothing really else other than this that I'm aware of. And they call these Marvel Cinematic Universe official tie-ins. Usually, what they do is they usually bridge the gap between films. Um, now, if, when you're getting these, you want if if you're looking in the shops, you want to look for this logo, this uh, red seal. That's the uh, MCU, Marvel Cinematic Universe, official tie-in seal. So uh, pretty much all look the same as well. They have a similar look to them. Um, if you've seen the other videos um, that I've done on BrandXReviews.com, you'll see the ones that they've done so far. But I'll very quickly recap. There was an Iron Man from 2008 uh, tie-in. Um, there was an Iron Man 2 from 2010. That pretty much bridged the gap between those two films. Um, there was a Captain America, the original Captain America from 2011 tie-in. Um, then there were a couple of Avengers ones. At this point they started calling them preludes and that's when they introduced this red seal. So there were two preludes, one about Nick Fury, one about uh, the Black Widow. Um, then just kind of continuing on, they had Iron Man 3 prelude. There was a Thor The Dark World prelude which came out uh, late 2013 to tie in with the film. So naturally, um, in March of 2014 we've had Captain America The Winter Soldier prelude. Now, some of these kind of differ in various ways. The early ones were basically, um, what they did was they would have the novel, well the graphic novelization of the film, so the film but just in comic book format kind of thing. And then also like a, a, an extra story that wasn't anything you saw in the film but it kind of tied in with it, just to kind of enhance the stories a little bit and just to kind of expand the universe. Um, and they used to have interviews as well, they'd have like a, at the back of the, the book they would have what's called a spotlight feature, I don't think this one has one but the Iron Man one has one for example, um, just interviews with the, the artists, the writers, that kind of thing but they kind of stopped doing the spotlight features, the interviews with some of the later ones and uh, I think the Winter Soldier one is probably, I wouldn't say, it's kind of disappointing, it depends how you look at it because Obviously what makes these good is that they are graphic novels, comics that tie in with the films. Now sometimes they kind of add all the stuff in like they'll, they'll throw in some original comics from the 1960s that this, the films were based on but they aren't canon with the films but they just kind of put it in just to kind of bulk it up a bit. This one is very heavily bulked up in that way with um, stories that aren't canon with the films which is kind of what you want. You want it's a tie-in, it's an official tie-in, it's a prelude. The majority of this is is that it's um, stories that have come before that you've probably already read that don't tie in with the film specifically. So from that point of view it's disappointing. Don't get me wrong, the actual stories are very good. Um, as you can see it's got stuff like this from the 60s, which are interesting to read. Um, but the reason you're buying this is because you want to get story that ties in with the film, that officially ties in with the film, that's the whole point. This has, all this has is a 14 page um, prelude 
to the Winter Soldier, which is what this thing is basically selling itself as. You can see how thick it is. It's got, there's quite a lot of stuff in there. Um, it's not it's not hugely um, thick compared to other graphic novels, but it's, you know, it's quite a size. So to have only 14 pages of this uh, as the Winter Soldier prelude, kind of a letdown. I've looked at Amazon, and I'll, most of the reviews on there are uh, from kind of disappointed fans, basically. But uh, don't get me wrong, a lot of it is 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 good, nevertheless. I'm just going to explain. I'm going to be more specific anyway now, and just say exactly what's in it. So, the first part of it is, is in two, comes in two issues, and it is a graphic novelisation of the first film, the um, Captain America, the first Avenger from 2011. It's a very truncated story, because it's only done in, in two issues, so it doesn't take long to read anyway. And if you've seen the film, you don't really need to read it. It's more just there from the point of view that it's interesting to see the film in a, in a comic format. So I guess from that point of view, you could say that is a prelude, uh, technically. It's kind of a, a cheap way of doing it, but um, it's, you know, they can, I suppose they can get away with that. And it starts off with, you know, credits, that kind of thing. It, just, it tells you what, what is in here, like when, when the issues are printed originally, kind of thing. But this is the original, um, well, the graphic novelisation of the first film. So you can kind of see, I'll try to find something that you might recognise uh, instantly from the film. This was this was a bit in the film where he's um, selling war bonds on stage. And he's kind of uh, doing his like song and dance routine. Um, I like that bit in the, in the film, I thought it was really good. Um, but like I say, if you've seen the film, you don't really need to, uh, to read this. But uh, if that's what you're after, by all means, go nuts. You can see from the artwork it's very loyal uh, to the others, to the other, to, well, to the film, to the source material. So, um, it kind of goes on, it does show the bit on the train where Bucky Barnes in the film uh, falls to his, well, what we think is his death, but obviously it's not if you've seen the Winter Soldier film. So you can see there all this is kind of depicted in, in here. So, again, like I say, that is technically a prelude to the Winter Soldier. But the actual prelude itself, the... The reason you're buying this is a bit that bridges the gap between Captain America 1 and 2. Um, is like I said, it's about 14 pages long, and uh, this is it. I'll just kind of very quickly show you what it is. So it's just, it's just called Marvel's Captain America The Winter Soldier Infinite Comic Number 1. So uh, you can see some of the artwork. This is the kind of look of the thing. So it starts off anyway with you've got these, uh, these terrorists, I guess. Um, breaking into the uh, Willis Tower in Chicago. It's kind of like the Sears Tower. Um, that's that's what you see there in the kind of Marvel universe. It does actually say as well, note, this story takes place between the events of the films Marvel's The Avengers and Marvel's Captain America The Winter Soldier. So it does specifically tell you where this is set, which is good, because you want to know like where it fits in. So you've got these, these terrorists anyway, and they go into the uh, the Willis Tower. Um, they're, kind of, they're just breaking in there and uh, going to the roof, basically, with this thing called the Zodiac, which is something they've got from S.H.I.E.L.D. And it's in a hypodermic needle in a suitcase that they've got. So these terrorists break in, and you've got uh, this guy working with Captain America, who kind of... Uh, Attack the bad guys, and the guy is Rumlow, so he's the uh, the guy that you saw in the Winter Soldier. And you can see from this that he's wearing his Winter Soldier uh, costume that he's that he wears in the film. That's pretty much in the comics. That's what he wears when he's kind of uh, head of Shield in some of the comics at various points. Anyway, from what I know about it. Anyway. So there's not really a huge amount of stuff that happens. It's just they kind of kick the asses of these bad guys. And then um, it just kind of goes on the next page again. There's kind of a bit of an exchange between them. They're just kind of kicking the bad guy's asses a bit more. Not really any kind of plot development or much of a plot going on. Then Black Widow turns up too, so that's another tie-in with uh, the Winter Soldier the film. Because obviously in that it's Captain America and the Black Widow and Brumlow working together. So again, that kind of ties in there. Again, more, kind of more of an exchange between them. They're kind of talking about how Rumlow has kind of been inspired by Captain America, what he's seen, the footage from World War Two. So that kind of <laughs> talks talks a bit about that there. Then 
the main terrorist guy kind of jumps out the window with the the suitcase with the Zodiac. Captain America jumps after him. Um, Black Widow and Rumlow kind of uh, throw a rope down while he's falling. Captain America catches the suitcase with the Zodiac in it, and then kind of um, gets attached to the rope that they've thrown down, and then gets winched back up into the uh, to the building. So it's pretty much saved the day, and that's it. It may seem like I've kind of brushed through that very quickly, like I haven't really got into what the actual plot of the thing is. There isn't really a plot. They could have, in fact, what somebody said on Amazon, pretty good analysis, they could have done this as a Marvel one-shot, pretty much. It would have been like a five-minute video. So it literally took, well, it took about five minutes to read. Um, like I say, it's about 14 pages long. It's very short. There's not a lot of dialogue in it. Well, there is, but not a huge amount that would make any kind of uh, story to it. But it's a prelude anyway, so that's that's what you get. That's the prelude section, and that's it pretty much. Everything else after this is just a collection of previous stories. We've got one here where uh, the Black Widow met Hawkeye. There's no point in going through this because these are all issues that have been, you know, these are these are all news basically. It's not really much for me to review. Um, then there's a story about the um, well, the introduction of the Falcon as well. So that's the coming of the Falcon there you can see. So obviously Falcon was in Captain America: The Winter Soldier. So it kind of you know I can see why they've printed that. It makes sense. And this is a story about Captain America and the Red Skull in it as well. So all kind of tied together with that. Uh, what else is there that we've got? Um, then there's Captain America Out of Time Part 6, so again, this is kind of a, a one-off issue, so it kind of, you can read it on its own, but you would you would want to read the whole story, really. So I think the point of this is to make you buy other graphic novels, basically, because all these, like if I kind of rewind a bit, the, the earlier story that had the Falcon in it, just says, continued in Marvel Masterworks, Captain America Volume 4, so it's pretty much a teaser to make you want to buy a different graphic novel, you can kind of see there what it says at the bottom. Um, which some I think some people are kind of annoyed about that. Like I say, when I've read the reviews of this, um, to have various like one-off parts. That if you want to read the whole thing, you've got to buy another book. It's kind of a bit of a, a cheat doing that and putting it in this graphic novel. In a way, that's one way you can look at it. Anyway, it doesn't bother me too much. Then there's the Ultimates issue two as well, um, which is uh, something else that they kind of finish it off with. Um, so specifically, anyway, I haven't I haven't gone into the exact issues that this thing prints. I'll just kind of uh, I'll just I'll just read those out. So Tales of Suspense number fifty seven, Captain America from two thousand five, which is number six, Captain America nineteen sixty eight number one hundred and seventeen, and the Ultimates number two. So that's pretty much it. There's not much else for me to review. Like I say, my other reviews have kind of gone on for like twenty minutes while I've read through the whole thing. Whereas this one, um, there isn't really anything else other than that so from a point of view of in comparison to you it's a bit of a letdown but it's still nice to have I would still recommend buying it don't get me wrong um, I just think it's uh, it would have been nice to have seen like a, a couple of larger issues of a Captain America Winter Soldier prelude rather than just a one-off 14 page section so if that's all they've done I mean fair enough but so I guess if they hadn't have released it, people would have complained if they'd have just said, no, it's just a 14 pages, there's no point in releasing a graphic novel because we can't fill that with just 14 pages. If they'd have done that, uh, people would have complained just the same. So that's pretty much it anyway for now. Um, as I say, these are, the, these are the ones that have come before and I've done reviews. If you want to go to brandxreviews.com, uh, you can see all the reviews of all the ones that I've done so far. I will just give a quick warning though, because when you're collecting these, there is one that I would recommend you don't buy, and that is this one. It is Marvel Avengers Road to Marvel's The Avengers. This is what it looks like, and it's got the the seal at the bottom, the uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe tie-in. The reason I'm not recommending this is every story that is in this is contained within these that I've already reviewed. It's just a kind of a collection of these. So if you're going to buy these don't buy this. If you're not going to buy these, by all means, get this. I'd recommend it because the stories are good. But if you're getting any of these, or all of these, um, don't buy this as well because you're basically um, covering what you've already bought. I kind of made the mistake, so I've got it upside down. Don't buy this because you're making a mistake of buying what you've already bought. So, um, but uh, I got it by mistake. It only cost me about £3, something like that, so it's not a huge waste of money. I'll probably end up giving it to, to a friend of mine or something. So, 
Um, that's pretty much it anyway. So uh, as I say, they are going to be releasing obviously more films. So they're going to—I know for a fact they're going to be doing a Guardians of the Galaxy prelude. I've got it on pre-order, and that is out in August. So check back uh, brandextraviews.com. That's the website address, and uh, I guess we will see you next time. Thank you very much for watching.